Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Deer and Butterfly and I'm going to be sipping on a little Cabernet and if you enjoy this video I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. For my paint today, I have acrylic paint. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, green oxide, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, Mars black, and chrome orange. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk, white piece of chalk for drawing, but you can certainly use a pencil or whatever else of uh, a well, writing utensil you'd like to use. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round brush and I have a number two round brush and I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy piece of chalk and all the and all the stuff in between. So that's down there for you. And if you do have your own materials, there's also a link down there where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're painting the background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are white, yellow, green, and brown. And I, how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be applying my paint in a circular fashion. I'm going to have it lighter at the top and darker down at the bottom. So it gives the impression of an out of focus, maybe meadow or field or somewhere in, in nature that this little deer has stumbled upon and it's gonna have a bunch of atmospheric dimension with it being a little bit lighter at the top and darker down at the bottom. So how I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with some white and yellow paint on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna start applying this in a circular fashion I kind of skip around a little bit or around the um, around the area, so that way I can have some spots that are more yellow than others, some spots that are more green than others, some spots that are lighter or darker than the other. This way, it'll give it more of an out of focus type look. I do use a good amount of paint on my brush throughout this process, um, but I don't use so much paint that I find myself having to blend the whole thing and it turning into one solid color. So as you're doing this, if you find that everything is turning into one solid color and you're not getting these almost gradual sections to, to the look of it, which will make it look out of focus, if it all seems to be blending together, that might indicate that you have overloaded your brush and you have a, a, a lot of paint on your brush that is preventing you from getting these more section type looking spots. So again, if it is, over, if your brush is a little bit overloaded, what might end up happening is you just keep blending, 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 and the whole thing is gonna end up looking like the same color. So now that I've got a good portion of the top and it, and it's really nice and light over here on the left hand side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start utilizing more of just the yellow and the green as I'm coming down. I'm not washing my brush. So what's happening is the white 
will naturally kind of work its way off of my brush and it will gradually get lighter and lighter as it's coming down my canvas. But I am making sure as I go along that I'm kind of overlapping these colors so they look like they belong together and they just look more of like an out of focus type appearance as opposed to distinct um, in focus kind of foliage, which we'll be doing later. We'll be doing some nice wild grass and, and some beautiful flowers and all kinds of fun, you know, fun things like that. When you do get to these separating um, points, if it's not blending in perfectly for you and, and, and you want it to look a little bit more natural, you can pull up some of the pieces like this, or you can use an upward kind of brush stroke. This will also give the illusion of like an out of focus um, grassy field or a meadow of sorts. I just added some brown to my brush. I'm gonna to start to get really a lot darker as I'm coming down right now. So there's a couple of different brush strokes that you could be using. If Again, I'm using a lot of a circular type brush stroke, but if you want to have more texture looking throughout the throughout the area or you want the the circles aren't doing it for you and you want there to be more of a soft kind of abstract out of focus background you can bring some of those brush strokes in an upward motion and that's going to allow for that beautiful out of focus long pieces of grass in the meadow um, and then I'm just gonna kind of keep going until I get all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. You can see it's getting a lot darker as I'm coming down towards the bottom. I am using mostly brown now as I'm nearing the end here. And then as I am finishing up here, I'm just kind of going back around, making sure I didn't miss any spots, just using a light kind of brush stroke to get these to, to blend in with each other. And again, if you have any areas that aren't blending as much as you want you can just bring up that brush and if you missed a couple of spots along the way don't worry we've got lots of other information that's going to be throughout this painting that will help us cover up any spots that didn't get uh, tended to during this step and then we're going to use our piece of chalk for the next step so once you've got your background all nice and painted in you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your writing utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are drawing an outline for our deer. I'm gonna be using my chalk, but you could certainly utilize any writing utensil that you would like to. Um, I do recommend though that before you start this step that you make sure that your background is dry. So, you know, you could take a little extra long break if you'd like to or you could dry it with any kind of fanning method including blowing on it if you'd like to or you can do what i did and just whip out a blow dryer and blow dry it that way so if yours isn't already dry i do recommend that you get yours dry so how we're going to do this is i'm going to um guide you into creating a couple of shapes uh, then we'll make some markers and connect those markers and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have something that resembles a little baby deer sitting off in, to, off in the meadow somewhere. So the first thing that we're gonna do is tackle the face and we're gonna start it with two circles. So we're gonna start one circle which is gonna represent the little nose or muzzle. So I'm gonna have my small circle, it's gonna be about a two inch wide circle in this vicinity here. So in order to find where I've, lo I've put mine, what you can do is if you find kind of the center of your canvas, this is about the center of my canvas, I came down maybe about an inch or two and to the left like an inch or two. So it's just off center to the left a little bit and below the center of your canvas. So it doesn't have to be in the exact spot as mine, but this gives you a good distance to um, not have to paint the whole body. <laughs> if it's way up high, you might end up having to paint some legs. So I recommend kind of on the lower side to be safe. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another circle around here. So if you come up from the center of this circle, maybe about two inches, you can make yourself a little bit of a marker. And then over to the left, maybe an inch or two, that gives you the start of your circle. And then just kind of make it relatively, 
and, and ratio wise the same on the left hand side. So this is probably I would say like a four and a half to five inch wide and tall circle that touches this one in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two circles. The first um, thing I'm going to do is connect the right hand side. I'm going to start about halfway down the circle and I'm going to give it a little bit of a sloping um, or a curved type of line that curves in towards um, the circles just a little bit. And then I'm going to do an opposite curve to connect this one to this one. So I'm going to start back where the, we'll call this like the jaw area. And as I come down here, I start to um, take it away from the circle right about here. And it's going to come down and it's going to meet the bottom of this circle, something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but this will give you a good, a good starting point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly below the center of this um, circle here, all the way to the bottom of my canvas and over to the left, just about an inch, make myself a little bit of a marker and come directly up from that in through this vicinity, make myself a marker and then just connect these two with a gentle curve like that. That'll give you the, the chest area of it. Then over on the left hand side, you're going to come about directly over from the bottom of this circle to the left hand side of your canvas, somewhere in this vicinity. And then about halfway up this circle. And then you're going to connect these two with a down and bring it back up for a little bit of a slope for the back of the deer. So something like that. Then we're going to make ourselves a couple of cute little ears. So these ears are going to be way up in this vicinity, um, left and right. I'm going to do um, two markers on the top of the head. These are going to be maybe about three inches apart from each other. So I'll make a mark somewhere in through there and then somewhere in through here. I think that this might be a little bit too light of a region for you guys to see my, my um, chalk. So I'm also going to use my pencil just so you can see these markers when I get up into the lighter region, but you can certainly still use your, your um, chalk. This is just so you guys can see it. And then I'm going to come down from here, maybe about two inches, somewhere in this vicinity, and do the same thing over on the left hand side. So again, this is a little bit light. I want to make sure that you guys can, can see this pretty well. So maybe about an inch and a half to two inches will, will work coming down there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up in kind of a diagonal motion. I'm going all the way up in through here. So this is a, if this is the center of my canvas, I'm about an inch or so to the right and maybe two or three inches down. And that dot will connect to here. I'm going to just use my pencil so you can see it and so I don't have to keep switching tools here. So as I connect this, I'm going to come down like this and just give it a nice gentle slope in through there. And then I'm going to do a similar kind of bring it down and something like that for that side of that ear. And then over here, I'm going to go up diagonally like this. So I am about two inches from the top and about two inches from the left. That's going to be the corner this year. I have this year just slightly higher than that one. I've got them at a little bit different of an angle just to add a little bit of interest. So you can have yours exactly at the same angle from one another or you can make them slightly different, totally up to you. And then I'm just going to connect those two with a curve and then I'll do the same thing over here. This one's going to be maybe a little bit at a different angle so it's going to have a little bit different of a bump to it but you could make it look exactly like that one if you wanted to but I'm giving it just a little bit more um, movement to it and that's all we're going to do for the outline of our deer so once you've got that done of course you can sit and fiddle with it as much as you want to but we're going to be using our large paintbrush for the next step so once you get this done you can put away your drawing utensil get out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the base coat for our deer. We're going to use our large brush and we're going to be using brown and rust. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to put a couple of designated areas for the brown paint and then we're going to paint the rest of the cute little deer in the rust color. So I'm going to take a little bit of brown paint on my large brush 
which I think I said I was using, but if I didn't, I'm using my large brush. And I'm going to underline the, the chin or the jawbone or whatever you'd like to call this. And then I'm just going to pull this darker paint down because I know that I want to have a shadow underneath here. You don't have to have a firm line underneath um, where it's meeting the rest of the fur, but I do want to have just some kind of dark area underneath that chin. Also, so you don't lose that line that you put there. Then I'm going to also do the same thing inside of my ears. I'm just putting a little bit of the dark brown and I don't need a lot because I'm really utilizing this dark brown as um, almost a a tint of sorts for this particular area. So I'm I'm putting it on here and hoping that it's gonna dry rather quickly. <laughs> but if yours doesn't dry that quick, no worries. So once I've got that on there, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some rust paint and I'm gonna start at the bottom of my deer's body and through here. And then I'm gonna move my way up into this shadowy area. So what's happening right now is if I did have any more of that brown on my brush, it is working its way off right now. And then that way when I go to do like the face and the side of the, the body, I will still just have that rust color on there. I am not terribly concerned about this looking perfect right now. I'm not using any sp special brush stroke. I'm really just looking to get this color on here. I'm going all the way up to my chalk mark. And if your chalk mark moves a little bit on you during this step, don't worry about it. Um, if your deer gets a little bit bigger in this step, don't worry about it. You can always modify it or adjust it later. It's not a big deal if your deer turns out a little bit of a different size than mine. And then I'm just going all the way to the edges. I'm doing the same thing on the face. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the edge of my chalk mark. I'm painting right over the interior chalk mark. You can even paint right over the exterior chalk mark. It will eventually just kind of disappear on you anyways. Um, if you're using pencil or if you used pencil and you can see the pencil mark underneath your paint, don't worry about that either because you're going to be doing many more steps onto this cute little deer that will definitely help to get rid of any pencil marks that you might be showing right now. And then I'm just going ahead and getting all the way up to the top of the head and you can have a firm line or a soft line as it meets the edges of your, um, of your little deer when I do animals, I really like to have softer edges when I know that the fur is intended to look fluffy. So on these baby deer, I know that a lot of them do look kind of fluffy. <laughs> so if yours ended up looking a little bit on the softer side as it was, um, as you're getting towards the edges, especially if you're utilizing a bigger brush like I am, that's quite all right. And you can see I'm kind of going over that, that brown a little bit just so it doesn't look like two designated sections. This way it looks like they, um, they kind of belong together. We'll be putting a lot of ear hair inside of those those ears too so again no no worries if it's not looking perfect just yet um, this is that's the beautiful part about these early stages of these paintings because we can be kind of looser in our paint strokes and if and if something doesn't turn out exactly the way we had planned it's all right because we got lots of details and information to go on top of it later so we're going to be switching to our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this first layer on here and again don't worry about it looking perfect yet um, you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the first layer of our nose and our eye on. So I'm, or eyes, I should say. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm in essence gonna just draw some shapes, which one of them we already did our, uh, uh, previously, which is the circle for the nose. And I'm just gonna paint it black, but where the, 
uh, nose meets the fur, I'm going to give a, a little bit more of a softer edge to it. So I have my medium brush. I just loaded it with black paint and I'm just kind of going along the edge. Your canvas is probably dry by now, but and the black will overpower any wet any um, of that color. But if you're having problems with a wet paint, you can certainly just dry your um, your canvas first. But it should be pretty pretty dry by this time. So I'm going to just kind of do my circle somewhere in this vicinity with my black paint. And then as I the interior can certainly just be a solid black, but as I get towards the exterior where it's meeting the fur, I just added a touch of water to my brush and I'm just going to kind of soften these edges so they're not really a firm edge and if yours goes too black don't worry we've got we're going to be adding a bunch more information I'm just going to kind of get this to be come up the bridge of the nose a bit get it to soften around these edges a bit and I just had a tiny bit of water on my brush is how I'm doing this and we're going to be adding shadows and all kinds of other stuff so if yours doesn't get soft enough around the edges don't worry about it we'll we'll have plenty of time to to make that happen i think that's pretty good and through here and then maybe just a little bit more i think i'm going to widen this darker part just a little bit bring it all the way out there there we go and then for my eye my eye is going to be directly between the nose and this ear here so if you're just to make kind of a diagonal line like that it's along that diag that diagonal line, but a little bit closer to the ear. So I'm putting my eye right about here, and I'm just gonna start by making myself a circle that is, I would say, about almost an inch wide by an inch tall. So something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out a little crease on the inside of the eye. So I'm just gonna bring this down in a little bit of a curved line in through here. And this can be a softer line too. It doesn't have to be a firm uh, type edge. And then at the top, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna bring it out towards this left a little bit. So these are gonna act as little dips in the, in the fur, or in the contour of the face. And that is, a, all I'm going to do, I'm kind of softening these edges of the eye as well. That's all I'm going to do for this step. We're going to actually use, oh, I can't forget that other little tiny eye too. I said, I, I initially said eye and then I said eyes and now that I'm painting, I'm like, oh, I just have one eye. But really I have a tiny little sliver of the other one. So all this is going to be is you're going to come directly to the right hand side and it can be directly in line. I have mine a little bit lower so it looks like the head is tipped a bit and all I'm doing is a tiny little crescent coming out on the side of the head. Just an itty bitty line something like that. We're gonna put um, eyelashes and a little um, highlight on it later as well, but that's all I'm gonna do for it right now. You wanna just make sure that size proportion is pretty similar to this one. It's just a little crescent coming off the side. Now we can go on to the next step. It's gonna be with that large brush, so you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the fur on the body. So we're gonna finish our fur on the body. I'm going to use my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, rust, yellow, and white. <laughs> so before I just start smashing the paint on there, let me tell you a little bit about the colors, why I'm using them and where I'm using them. So this type of deer that we're painting out when they're babies and they have these little like Bambi spots on them, they also have this almost light colored or a lighter toned fur underneath their um like in their neck region as well as underneath their their jaw in through here so i'm going to be using like a tan color in through here but i want it to look like it's in the shadow so i'll also put a little bit of a darker area right underneath the chin then i will put 
my little Bambi white spots on and then with a little maybe a little bit of yellow white and brown just a like a creamy color to give it a little dimension and then some white to to add these the texture to it and then I'll be using brown rust and um, yellow to kind of fill in the gaps and make sure that I've got a nice texture through the entire coat the first step that we did putting the um, rust color on there I wasn't terribly concerned about which direction my brush stroke was going in. This time I am because I want it to look like it's fur. So every brush stroke I make is going to be in the direction that I feel that the fur is laying down. So on the chest, it's going to be kind of down in this direction, not terribly straight. I want you to see the contour of the body. So I'll have a little bit of a curve as I'm on the back. I'll be going more in this direction, kind of left to right and maybe down a little bit. I'm not terribly concerned what happens at the bottom of the deer because we're going to be hiding that with a whole bunch of wild grass and daisies. So I don't spend a lot of energy down at the bottom of the deer. Just kind of make sure maybe it looks like it's going into the shadow, but don't worry about making it awesome at this point. So I'm going to start by making myself just kind of a tan type color that is complementary to the rest of the deer. So I'm going to use some brown, maybe a little bit of rust, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of white. And I'm going to get myself this creamy tan type color that I'll utilize in a lot of places, but it's going to be the base for this chest area. When I'm doing this fur, I will never have a lot of paint on my brush and I will always just be using like the little tip of my brush. So I'm going to start this area in through here with just the, the tip of my brush, just kind of utilizing it in the direction of which I feel that the fur is falling. And because I am using acrylic paint, acrylic paint will be on the more see-through side. So you'll be able to see those little bits of colors from the layer that we put on before, the first layer that we did. This section is gonna come about halfway between the left to the right. So I'm going to stop this section about here. It's kind of like a little square kind of section. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and a touch of black to give myself the shadow underneath. I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to put a little bit darker of an area underneath here. Just getting my paper towel to make sure that I've got enough or make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush maybe a little bit more black just to get it to go a touch darker for me. And you can keep tweaking this as you see fit. Um, if you feel that it needs a little bit more darkness, great. And you just kind of keep adding these, these bits of the, the fur until you feel like it's, it's as much as you want it to be. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use the remnants of that darker color kind of coming up this back side of the, the neck and now I'm gonna start transitioning into my Bambi spots. So I wanna wash and dry my brush because I have those dark colors on there right now. I'm gonna utilize this light color plus a little bit of white as my initial bam the little the little white spots. So I used this tan color plus a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna kind of sporadically put them along the back. They don't, they can be of different sizes. They can be in a kind of a chaotic pattern. They don't have to be exactly in a, in a systematic order. And I don't necessarily need to put any down in that chest area. I don't think they have them down in the chest area. I think they're primarily on, the, on their backs. So now that I've got that in through there, I'm gonna let that sit for a second. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some rust and a touch of brown, just to make sure I have a second layer of fur on the rest of the deer while that those Bambi spots are drying. I'm sure there's a more technical name for them than Bambi spots, <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna call them today. And I'm just kind of using my rust, maybe a little bit of yellow, just to get some different tones in the fur as I'm coming along. And again, I'm just really adding a second coat onto um, that original base coat that we had. I'm going in between my what's going to be my lighter spots for the um, for the on the back 
again just to make sure that I have a good representation of the of that really pretty chestnut kind of color that these deer are. At the top, maybe I'll use a little bit more white and yellow just to get this to be a little bit brighter along the top edge of the of the deer, but I don't want it to get confusing with those spots. So let me just get this layer on here. And now I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna rinse my brush real quick and I'm gonna pick up white. And that's going to make these spots pop out. So I don't have much on my brush. I don't wanna cover up the entire area that I did for the first round. So I'm just using the little corner of my brush because those darker, those darker tones of tan underneath it will make these look three-dimensional. So I'm just using a bit of white paint on my brush and I'm not even reloading it, just kind of getting these little spots on here. And you might find that you want more spots than mine. You might find that you want yours to be brighter. If they're brighter at the top of the back, that's gonna make it look a little bit more realistic, like this is going down into the shadows of the, um, of the meadow or of the little, field that he's having fun in. And then once you've got that done, we're gonna utilize the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our ears. I'm gonna be using the large brush, but you might find based on your comfort zone that you want to use a smaller brush than I'm using but you can certainly watch how I do my process and then after that you can make your own educated decision <laughs> what brush you'd like to use. So these deer have a lot of um, hair inside of their ears and I've got my ears twisted in a couple of different um, directions so what I'm going to be doing I'm going to use my large brush the colors that I'm using are brown, white, rust, yellow, I might use a little black, but I might, if I do, I'll let you know. Most likely not, but if I, if I need to, I will. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give myself kind of a separation of the inside of the ear to the outside of the ear, and then I'm going to, with my brush, pull in these little pieces of fur that are covering up that inside part of the ear. So when I do this, I'm not gonna have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna be using that tan color as my first, um, as my first pass on it, and then I'll be utilizing white. And I'm gonna go with these two colors so that way I will have some good dimension in these little pieces of fur. If I just did it white coming off, coming out of the gate, it might look a little flat. So I'm gonna utilize that um, that creamy color as well so I can have a little bit more dimension to it. And if I don't get enough dimension, then I can go into my brown if I need to make it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna play it on the safe side and I'm gonna add a touch of water to my brush to mix in with this um, tan color because I, I know my brush is big and I know I wanna have some control as to where I'm putting this paint. So I just added a tiny bit of water to it. I can always add more paint to the equation, but having it on the fluid side is gonna allow me to get the type of line that I want to, to start this off. So I don't want my ear to go to come into the face on this side, so what I'm gonna do is I'm starting up at the tip be top of the ear. Oh, you can't even see that, so I need to add some more white, make it a little bit lighter so you can see it here. So I'm starting up at the tippy top of my ear, and I'm going to, in essence, kind of outline where I want this is gonna be the exterior of the ear and this is gonna be the interior of the ear. So something like this, and I'm gonna stop it right where it meets the head, and then I'm gonna take this wet paint and with the corner of my brush, I'm just pulling in little streaks into the center of that ear. So I didn't have my line too, too wide, so that way I was able to just kind of pull in little streaks and I'm gonna do the same thing along this exterior edge if you can, leave a tiny dark edge along that side of the ear. So that's going to make it look like that's the, I guess, the skin part of the ear. So as I do this, I'm going to 
leave a little bit of a dark edge to this ear. And I'm just using the corner of my brush right now, giving myself an outline. And then I'm going to, I like to wipe my brush off on my paper towel a lot. <laughs> and then I'm just going to, with the corner of my brush, pull in some of these lighter pieces of fur. I'm going to do the same thing on the other ear before I start to add white to this. So this will give this a second to dry. So I'm going to use that same kind of watered down light tan mixture. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give myself an outline and then pull the fur in. So this one is going to be a little bit more tipped um, so you can see more of the inside of it. So I'm going to come to the edge here and I'm going to start bringing it around in through here and then bringing it back maybe somewhere around here. And then I'm going to, while that paint is still wet, use the corner of my brush and just pull some of those little pieces into the center of the ear. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side and I'm going to leave some of this dark edge exposed so you can detect the edge of the skin of the ear and I'm bringing this in through here and then just pulling some of this up a little bit. Now that I've got that on there, I can start to add a bit of white into that same exact area. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm taking a tiny bit of white paint and this time you might not want to have as much water on it. I'm just going for my straight white but making sure I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. And then I'm going to utilize just the teeny tiny tip of my brush and you can see how it's becoming nice and has a lot of dimension to it. And I'm just bringing just a little bit in through there and they don't have to all come out at exactly the same angle. They can come out, you know, some can come out a little bit more curved than others. And I just don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm really just using the tip of my, of my brush. So that's how I'm accomplishing that. I'm going to go ahead and do the other ear and in the same method, just kind of using the edge of my, the little corner of my brush. And because I'm doing it in this fashion and I used that little bit darker of a tone to begin with, I'm getting some good dimension on this. And if you felt that you needed the inside of your ear to be a little bit darker, you feel free to add a little bit more brown in through there. That's going to be a visual preference on your part and then I need to finish the edges of the ears and maybe a little bit more shadow in through here so what I'm going to do right now I have a little bit of white on my brush I don't need too much so I just kind of wiped it off on my paper towel I want the top of these ears to be nice and light so I can utilize my yellow with that little bit of white that I had on my brush and give almost like a little bit of a highlight up on the top of these ears and get them to blend in with the rest of the ear. So I'm just adding a bit of a highlight and if you can't see it enough, definitely add a little bit more white. You wanna be able to detect that there is a highlight and with whatever you've got for your background behind it, you might need to adjust it a little bit. Now I'm picking up a little bit of rust just to get this to blend in a little bit and this is where you would make that decision if you needed to use a smaller brush feel free to do so i tend to like my larger brushes because they give me a lot of um just diversity with the brush stroke so it's it's a it's a preference you get used to one way and and that's that falls into your comfort zone and if you needed to add a bit more brown feel free to do so I'm going to actually add a little bit more brown at the bottom of this ear just to give it a little bit more shadow and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got your ears all nice and finished here you can wash and dry and if you went into your head a little bit don't worry we can we can fix that in a minute um, we can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finish oops I didn't I couldn't even get the first word out finishing the face fur on our um, deer gosh Sometimes my mouth just doesn't work. You try and say that three times fast. Finish the face, 
See, I can't do it. Finish the face fur. Finish the face fur. Finish the face fur. Finish the face fur. And so how I'm going to do this, I'm using my big bristle brush again. If you want to utilize a smaller brush, I like the firmness of these brushes and I like utilizing the edge of them because I can get those separated pieces of fur. You could certainly use the same style, only a smaller brush if you wanted to, or if you have your favorite fan brush or, you know, a different kind of brush that will give you those separated um, pieces of fur. That's what I would recommend doing. So I'm going to be using all the colors that I've already used on my deer, which is, um, I might not use black, maybe I will, but definitely brown, rust, yellow, and white, and that tan color that we created earlier as well. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna work from dark to light, and I do wanna kinda give you a little vote of confidence. If it does not end up looking awesome around the nose and the eye right now, don't worry about it, because when we, when we finish our facial features, see, I'm gonna become a, a linguist, a professional linguist after all these tongue twisters. Once um, we finish, when we go to finish the facial features, you'll be able to kind of tweak any of the fur that is around them as well. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I will never have to, a ton of paint on my brush. It's always gonna be just a teeny tiny bit of paint. I'm gonna start with my darker areas. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown paint on my brush. I know that my dark areas are going to be away from the light source. I'm considering my light sources over on the right top. And it's also gonna be in any area of the face that dips in. So I have, I'm gonna have a shadow on the left hand side because it's going almost like around the face. I'm gonna have a couple of shadows on the cheeks because they dip in where the muscles are. I'll have a little shadow above the eye where the little eyebrow bone muscle things are and maybe a couple of little shadows back here where to me it, it feels like it dips in a little bit when it meets the ear so I'm using brown paint I'm going to on this left hand side I'm just going to kind of rub it in again I, ha I hardly have any paint on my brush and I'm going to just give this like a soft edge where it's just going to kind of blend right into that rust color that's next to it I'm going to do the same thing along the face or, or front to the left of the nose. So somewhere about halfway up that nose, I'm just going to kind of pull a little bit of a darker area out in through here. And I'm bumping into my nose as well. That's going to help with the, um, with the blending of the, the nose area as well. I'm just going to put a little bit down in through here also. I think I am going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of black paint. I said I wasn't sure, but now that I'm seeing it against the rest, I definitely want a little tiny bit of black paint just to make sure that I get a good enough shadow on here. And again, I'm hardly using any paint at all on my brush just to get this in through here. I do know that I want a little bit of a shadow in through here. This is gonna give um, the shadow from the muzzle area or the top of the, the nose to that little cheek area. So that's where that's gonna come into play. Putting a little bit of a shadow underneath this eye in through there. I've got a little bit of a shadow right in through here which is gonna be part of that eye, eyebrow bone sockety area, <laughs> which I, I know that's the technical term for it. And then I'm gonna put a little one in through here. I haven't reloaded my brush. I'm just using the remnants of a little bit of black and brown on my brush right now. I've got um, a little dip in area where it meets the ear. So I'm just putting a little bit of a shadow in through there, just kind of getting this to blend in with the, with the forehead area. And then I think I want a little bit of a shadow on, I, I don't feel like I have enough of a shadow back where that ear is, so I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to make sure that I have enough of a shadow where this ear 
meets the head, even, I'm painting the ear right now, sorry. <laughs> I'm not even painting the head, I'm painting the ear because I don't feel like there's enough shadow there. So we're, we're utilizing this step to put the shadow on that ear. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working my way to the light. That was about all the areas that I wanted for, for my shadow areas. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize some of that tan color. I'm not washing my brush. I'm just gonna utilize some of that tan color with maybe a little bit more rust and yellow. So you, you'll kind of uh, discover what, in, what red intensity you want this to be. I've got mine going more towards like a golden type color as it's going into where the sun is hitting it the most. Um, but in the dark, these are probably, the face is probably a very similar color to the regular fur. So we're just adding the highlighted kind of areas from the sun and from the contours of it. So I just went a little bit lighter than I had on my brush and I'm working my way towards the light. So you don't ever want to just pick up your lightest color for your fur and put that on and think that it's going to look um, realistic. You have to kind of build your way towards the light. So I just went one shade lighter and I know that I have kind of a dip in the forehead in through here. So I'm going to start adding my fur in that direction. And because my paint is see-through, this is going to help with that, um, with being able to see the, the colors from underneath. So this is going to be kind of my next light or darkest area. I do want to make sure that I am blending it with everything so I can add a little bit of this in through this area and in through here. And again, I'm just going to my my next lightest areas, I guess is or my they're still pretty dark, but they're lighter than that that um that shadowy area. And the trick is when you're doing this to well, there's lots of tricks, but one of the tricks is to make sure everything looks like it belongs together. So even though we put a shadow in through here, we can still put fur on top of that shadow. If you've got very little paint on your brush, you can just kind of go right on top of it and it's gonna make it look really nice and natural. So I'm gonna utilize the remnants of what I just did on the forehead to come and get the other shadows to kind of talk to one another. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna progressively get lighter. So right now I've got those same colors, rust, yellow, and whatever was kind of on my brush. I wanna to start to, my next lightest area in my opinion is kind of at the top of the head. So I'm adding a little bit of fur in through there. And as I'm doing this, I am always putting my brush in the direction that I feel the fur would go. So like what I was talking about on the chest, I'm adding my fur in the direction that I feel that it would be coming off the face. So right now I'm picking up a little bit of that tan color to start getting the um, entire face a little bit lighter. Now that I've got my darker areas in there, I picked up a bit of that tan color and this is where you're gonna start to see the, the form or the shape of the animal start to emerge. So I know that I have a pretty light area on the forehead, so I think I need a little bit more paint so we can actually see what I'm doing here. <laughs> so here we go. Now we can see it a little bit. And again, I, want, I need to make sure that I've, I'm putting that fur in the direction that I feel that it is, um, that it's laying down on the animal. And I am going, making sure I have paint or another coat of paint on top of that original um, burnt sienna that we put on there. So I am just building my way to the lighter tone. So I did that on the forehead. Now I'm gonna start adding a little bit more in through here, a little bit lighter of a color. And then I'm just gonna kind of gradually work my way towards the light. The lightest area for me is on the forehead is gonna be in through here. And again, I hardly have any paint on my brush. I'm gonna just kind of keep working my way to the nose. I'm gonna put a little bit of lightness in through here. This is looking a little bit too um, creamy of a color. I want it to be a little bit more richer and golden. So I'm gonna finish with this color. Um, 
putting a little bit of it everywhere and then I'm gonna get myself into more of a brighter color. I do know that there's a patch of light or whitish fur in through here, similar to how it is on the chest. So I'm gonna make sure I carry some of that right in through here right now. It's, it's got it in through here and then it, there's a little bit underneath the mouth as well. So I'm gonna just kind of add a smudge in through here, but we're gonna work on the, the mouth more in a, in a bit, but this just kind of gets it started. So I want this fur to start to get a little bit lighter and brighter. So I'm definitely gonna utilize my yellow and my rust is gonna be the base color and I'm also going to utilize some white as well. So this gets it more into that goldeny kind of color. And again, I'm just going to keep going lighter and lighter. So now that I've got this golden type color, I will start to just make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. I'm just wiping it off on my paper towel. I'm going to start to, again, just kind of add these little flecks of this color in through here. I don't need to color the entire head. I'm just adding these little speckles of this of this tone throughout the um, throughout the, the 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 face. And I'm going to do the same thing coming in through the nose. And again, I'm going to start to work my way a little bit lighter and lighter as we go through this process. So you can see it does take a little while if you want to get those layers of the fur to really look nice and natural. But that's that's the beauty of this. If you can just kind of slow yourself down and just get, you know, one little section done and just kind of move on to the next section in a gradual kind of way, it will make it look the most natural. So I'm just adding a little bit of white to my mixture. So now my, my golden is a little bit even lighter. And if you run into a point where you're like, oh, there's too much paint on my canvas, it's too, it's too thick, it just looks like it's all blending together, just let it dry for a minute and come back with, a, um, with the same process with maybe a little bit drier of a brush and then you just kind of keep, keep adding those little, those little pieces of fur. And you can see now I'm getting into those very pretty tones that are gonna really show the, the full form to it. And, but I still need them to connect to the whole head the entire time. So I know that I've got these little areas that I want to have the most highlight on them. So I'm making sure that I, I tackle those. I've got my little fur coming over on the cheek. And you can see to me, it's starting to really build itself. I've got it coming down into the face. I'm still using a pretty dry brush as I'm, as I'm going through this process. I do want that right side to be the lightest because I feel that that's, again, where the most of the sun is coming or the, the light source, so to speak. So I am just kind of continuing to add these little bits of layers. I don't want to forget about over here. Just make sure that that's got a, a nice transition and where you have those um, shadowy areas, just make sure that they, they transition well. You just don't want them to look like they're uh, a, a line. You want them to make sure that they go right into the rest of the head nice and naturally. And I think I'm ready to start popping on my really light stuff on the top of the head. So I'm just taking what I had and adding a bit more white to it. So that way it's just one or two tones lighter. And now we're gonna start adding those, those tiny little specks of the brightest of the bright. Oh, I might, I might go a little brighter than this, but um, this definitely starts to get these almost like soft little baby pieces, the ones that are, I, I, I equate it to puppies. Like when puppies, have their new fur or even kittens they're always so much softer <laughs> when they're babies so when i do when i'm doing these cute little animals like this i'm like oh i just want to keep la layering on these these beautiful um specks of fur because it's just going to make them look even more fluffy and more soft even if they uh you know aren't necessarily 
as soft and in in life as I'm making them look on my painting. They just they just represent little cute soft animals to me. So I am just kind of getting this layer on the forehead, and I pro I think I am going to do one more brighter um, tone along that that edge in through there. Oh, he's looking cute. I can't wait to put the little details on the nose and on the eye. He's gonna come to life before we know it. So I'm just, again, adding a little bit more white to that mixture, just so I can bring it into a, a, just a tad more lighter in through here. And then mm, maybe, maybe a little more light. Hold on, just adding a little bit more light to my, to my mixture. And I know I have way too much paint on my brush right now, so I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel and then just make sure that I've got this. Yeah, here we go. So you, if you've painted with me before, highlights do it for me. I like my highlights. <laughs> so I'm just continuing to add more and more until it gets as bright and as alive and has enough sunshine showing on it. And again, if around your eyes isn't totally um, speaking to it being finished to you yet, don't worry about it because when we go ahead and do our um, finish the eyes and the, the facial features, we'll be able to tackle any little things that you need to do around those eyes. So I'm just kind of adding a bit more lightness onto the tippy top of the head just to make sure that it looks like that's being hit with a little bit of sunshine too. And I know right now it looks like he's kind of got some bangs going on, <laughs> but it'll look better when we when we finish the, the eyes. But you can certainly kind of keep tweaking this as much as you want to. I may end up, you know, having a little bit more um, fun while while the camera's off, but I'm still going to um, kind of keep playing with this, making sure that this kind of transitions into the nose. We'll put our eyelashes on. We will put some, you know, fur or like fur around the eyes. So, you know, just put as many little pieces of fur along the face that you feel that you that you would want. Oh my God, he's so cute. And I, you know, just kind of keep tweaking it. Again, around the eyes, we will definitely um, finesse a little bit more, but you can see, I, this is one of those steps that I could just sit here for days and days and days and keep adding my little bits of, you know, fur here and a little fur there, but you definitely just have fun step back from it every now and again just to make sure that you've got the um the dimension that you want sometimes just kind of letting it sit and and dry for a little bit and then coming back to it sometimes that will help you to um see if there's anything more that you want to do if you feel like you've made this too light like i feel like i don't have enough dimension in there just add a little bit of your original color back in through there that will make it dip back in so you can you know again just have some fun with it the brightest spot should be kind of in that forehead area above the eyes a little bit you can have a little bit of lightness on this on the nose or even on almost the whole right side of that face that's going to again tell the story of the of where the light is and then just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you've got as much as you want and then we're going to be utilizing our let's utilize our mm, our small brush for the next step so once you've got all of your beautiful facial fur on here and you've tweaked it as much as you want again don't worry about near the eyes even though i'm worrying about near the eyes <laughs> We'll tackle those in a minute. So medium brush, get ready for the next step. Or small brush, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our facial features. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna use all, all of my colors, <laughs> except for probably green. So I'm definitely gonna use some black and white, um, for the nose area and some brown for the nose area, for the eyes, black and white, and all variations of my fur colors. So I'll call them out as I'm using them so you can 
keep along with me and um, make yourself a cute little deer just like mine. So I'm gonna start in my nose area. And this type of deer that we're doing has a couple of distinct um, areas of color or marking. They have this cute little um, white fur underneath their chin, almost like a little beard. And then this section of the bottom of their chin or their, their jawbone in through here has a similar color to what you used in through here, only it would be brighter because it's not in the shadow like that is. So what I'm gonna first do is I am going to be using that tan color that we created earlier to just start where these markings are. So I'm just picking up a little bit of that tan color and I know that I'm gonna have some um, of that little beard underneath the chin. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of that light fur in through there. I'm also going to have some in this area in through here. So I'm gonna skip maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, something like that. And this is gonna be a little bit um, maybe of a thicker section as it's closer to the n nose and maybe a little bit thinner as it goes away. And I'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit. <laughs> in order to get a little bit of a, um, of a messy kind of section to make it look like it is of the fur variety. And you can also just do individual little um, strokes to make it look like fur as well. This um, light fur that we have in that chin also carries up to the side of the nose a little bit. So I'm gonna come up, I think I'm gonna bring this out just a little bit further, that little chin fur. And then I'm gonna go kind of directly up from here and make almost like a little triangle type section of this um, lighter fur. But I'm gonna leave a little space between it and the chin fur, because that's gonna be where the mouth is gonna go in a second. And then I'm gonna put a nostril on. So I'm using that um, tan color, but I'm also gonna pick up a little bit of brown and maybe a touch of black as well. I just want some kind of dark color, but not black to create this nostril. So the nostril is gonna be kind of almost, if you follow this curve, it'll be in this vicinity. It is an interesting nostril. It's not just like a hole. It's kind of like a, a slit in the side. So I'm going to be um, creating the skin around the nostril. So here we go. I'm gonna start up in through here and I'm going to make myself this little, like an arcing type motion like that. And then I'm gonna do another one that is going to um, touch in through here. So this dark part is going to be the inside of the nostril. And then what I'm going to do is I'm bringing this lighter color all the way across the bridge of the nose like this because they have a, like a little area of white fur or skin or something that separates the the nose from the um, from the fur above. And then let's see, what else am I gonna do with this light color? I'm gonna put a touch on the tip of the nose. So for me, the tip of the nose, these they almost have like a square nose. So I'm gonna utilize this light color. I'm wiping it off on my paper towel right now because I don't wanna have too much. And I'm just doing a lighter section on the tip of the nose, bringing it almost all the way across to the other side. We're gonna put a brighter highlight on it in a minute. I just want this to look like it's got some dimension to it. I'm just kind of rubbing it in right now. So it almost fades into the rest of the um, nose area, so to speak. Now what I'm gonna do, I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a little bit of black paint and I wanna make sure that I have um, enough of a separation for your mouth. So I'm in essence kind of adding the creases for the mouth and making sure that I have as many black areas as I need. And there's also a little black underneath the um, chin fur as well. So I'm just kind of, oops, I need a little more paint on my brush if you guys wanna see it. So I've just got a little bit of black paint on my brush in through here. 
And as I'm going into areas that are have some fur, I don't need a clean black line. I really don't need a clean black line anywhere. It can always just kind of fade into the, um, the rest of the area. So maybe a little underneath the nostril and inside the nostril. Right now I'm just kind of adding this to give it a little bit of contour. I think the um, mouth kind of comes out a little bit in through here. So just making sure that I've got that separation where it needs to be. I'm gonna put a little bit of black underneath this um, lighter area that we created in through here. And I'm just, again, just moving my brush in a up and down or a wiggly kind of fashion to give that um, some little black fur underneath there, making sure the bottom of the um, nose is still nice and dark where it meets that mouth. And then let's see what I'm like gonna do for that mouth area. Now I'm gonna start adding, or mouth and nose, I'm gonna start adding the brighter spots. So I just washed my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint and this is going to add the bright little pieces of fur or hair that are along here. So as I'm doing this, I realize that I did the first layer in that tan color. I wanted to do that so I can have a, some dimension to this. So as I'm doing these little pieces of white fur, I'm making sure that I don't cover up all that tan fur. And same thing with here. I've got a little white area up here of this fur but I don't need to cover up all that tan. And because I'm using it in like um, a, a gradient type way, it allows it to look a little bit more natural. And the same thing with this little area in through here. I know that it's the same color as that in real life, but this is in the sunshine a bit more. So I'm gonna add a couple of brighter pieces. And again, I don't have to do the whole thing, just a couple of brighter pieces that are gonna indicate you know, the texture to the fur and give you a little bit of dimension all the while. I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some white paint and I'm gonna do some little sparkle dot reflection kind of area on the on the shiny nose maybe it's a shiny wet nose like a puppy has when they're nice and healthy their noses tend to be a little on the on the wet side i'm going to make sure that i bring it kind of farther over in through here and you can get this bright area to be as as bright as you want add a little flex of the white up in through here into that little separating area. And then I just need to make sure that all of these areas kind of talk to the rest of the face. So you might want to or need to go into your um, original fur color or bring a little bit more brown or black into here just to get it to almost fade into the rest of the face. I'm gonna utilize a little bit of water on my brush to get this to just kind of fade in. What I don't wanna happen is to have really clean lines. Like I don't want it to look like it's all being outlined by these colors. I want them to look like they just naturally go into one another. And again, this is one of those steps that it might take you a little bit to, to get the um, dimension that you want. Maybe you need a little bit more brown here or there to make it look a little bit more natural or a little bit more white. Whatever you feel is it's gonna take to make it look um, the most natural in your, in your visual opinion would be um would be the way to take it the nose is going to be uh you know on the more flatter side so it could in essence kind of have a highlight down that that center area so if you feel that it looks a little too smushed in just add a little bit more highlight to it and that will make it pop out a, a bit more and then once you've got your nose the way that you want it and again you can certainly just kind of keep tweaking it and you know making it into that vibrancy that you want you could even put if you feel that your deer is turned a little bit more you could put a little of this tuft of white fur just popping out, poking out over here on the side. So that's gonna be, you know, again, another little visual preference on your part. And then I'm just gonna kind of move on to my eye, if I can ever stop this section. And I think that looks pretty darn cute. Maybe, maybe a little bit more up and through here. And again, just making it look like it belongs to the other areas around, you know, the, um, 
where they kind of enter into one another. Sometimes that can be the toughest thing to do. So if it takes you longer than you expected it to take you, don't worry, just take your time. No big deal. Uh, you can add a little bit of highlight over here. I will work on the eye in a minute, <laughs> but I'm, I like um, making sure that I've got these areas nice and settled before I move on simply because I my mind will start to wander and then or my brush will start to wander and it won't come back and I'll later regret that I didn't finish this spot while I was here <laughs> so I'm just adding a bit more highlight on that right hand side again just to kind of tell the story of where that highlight is and again if you felt that you needed to add any more of anything in through this area feel free to do so maybe maybe a little bit more transition better transition right in through here there we go all right i'm moving on to the eye so i am going to wash and dry my little brush and where i'm going to start is with the um eyeball itself so the best i could detect from um the pictures i was looking at is the colored part of the eye can be on the grayer side i wasn't really seeing a distinct yellow or rust color on these um, on these animals uh, you might be able to find them of a brighter eye color but my the, what I was saying was kind of gray so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself kind of a warm dark gray kind of color so I'm just using black and brown with a touch of white you could even use like your cream color and just make it a little bit darker I'm going for a medium to, to, to dark gray because that's what I was seeing. And then once I've got that color, I'm going to do like a crescent type shape at the bottom of the eye. Their pupils seem to be not of a circle. The black pupil is almost like an uh, oval with pointy edges to it. So I'm going to try and emulate that by putting the colored part in a kind of a long oval type um, way and then I'm going to soften the bottom edge by um, just blending it in a little bit with a touch of black and then I will put a tiny bit of a lighter spot in the middle just to give it um, a little bit of dimension to it so it's not just one solid color and then what I'm going to do is I am going to make a sparkle dot and when I make my sparkle dot, it's not going to be at the top of that black area um, that we've already designated as the eye. It's going to be, it's going to sit down a little bit. So I'm just, I have white on my brush and I'm going to make it somewhere in this vicinity. And then I'm just going to kind of pull it out a little bit. The sparkle dot can really be whatever kind of shape that you want it to be. It can be bright white, it can have hues of other colors within it, it can have a little streak here or there, so whatever you feel looks appropriate, have fun with doing that. And then I'm gonna finish the exterior of the eye. So my biggest goal here is to just get it to blend into the face and make it look really nice and natural. I'm gonna add some eyelashes and stuff, but I wanna make sure where this dark area is enters into the face nice and naturally. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush. I washed it and dried it. Now I have a little bit of black and brown on my brush. And I'm gonna kind of re-identify this little mark that we, that we had um, talked about earlier. And I'm also gonna make sure that I have this top area the way that I want it as well. I think I wanna pull it out just a little bit more. And then I, I needed to blend in with the rest of the face. So I'm just gonna put water on my brush and kind of wipe it on my paper towel and get these areas to blend in with the surrounding area a little bit. I don't need it to be perfect. I just want it to look like it's almost fading into that fur that's next to it. And you wanna make sure that this bottom area does the same thing, and you'll see why in a second. And then I also want to, if I need a little bit more shadow or anything around the eyes, now is the time to do it. Like I feel I should have a little bit more up in this vicinity and perhaps a little bit more in through here. I know that we set it 
that um, we put these into place before, but I feel like mine faded a little bit into the um, fur too much. So I'm just kind of re-identifying them. And this is going to, again, just help with the, with the shape around the eyes and all the um, other little contour information that is occurring around the eye and again if you do too much you can always add the um, add more fur on top of it which I'm going to do that in a minute just to make sure that it again looks nice and natural and anywhere else that you feel that you might want a little bit more darkness perhaps you pull this down a little bit further in through here if you need to and now I'm going to now that I've got my nice little dark areas I'm going to um, add my lighter fur on top. I'm adding my eyelashes last, just for the red. Ooh, maybe I'll put a little sparkle dot on this eye first, and then while um, while it's drying, we'll finish the fur. So I just put a little bit of white. I'm really just going towards the top of the eye and just doing a little tiny sliver along there. And then I'm going to finish my fur around that eye. So this is gonna be that light creamy color. Maybe you add a little bit of white and yellow to it so it looks a little bit more in the sunshine and any of your fur colors that you feel that you need to bring back or to blend in. So I like to put a, a bright little piece of fur in the corner of the eye. So again, I'm, I am using my fur brush stroke, which is just little almost curved lines. I want it to be the brightest kind of in that corner of the eye. And then I'm just kind of without doing anything more with my brush, I'm just utilizing the remnants of that color on my brush and just pulling it down into this um, left area. So that gives you a highlight and then it also kind of fades it or trails it off into the rest of the fur. And then I'm gonna do the same on the eyebrow bone. So that's gonna be in through here. So I don't feel like it's um, speaking enough, <laughs> like it doesn't have enough oomph to it. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more and make sure that it blends in with the shadow that we just added next to it. So just making sure I have enough in through there, make sure I have enough on this back side of the eye. And I'm just gonna kind of keep working my way around the eye to make sure that I have enough of those highlights and shadows. Um, I feel like I need a little bit of my burnt sienna in through there, maybe a little bit darker in through here. And I'm just going with, you know, what I'm feeling right now and where I feel that we need to have a little bit more darkness or a little bit more fur. I think I need a little bit more up above here just to give this a nice, make, make it pop, oh yeah, there we go. Make it pop out just a little bit more. And again, I wanna make sure that it looks like it belongs with everything else. So if you need to, you know, just utilize a little bit of water on your brush that will pull those little pieces of um, fur as far out as you need them to be. I feel like I want this corner of the eye to pop out or to come out just a little bit more. And maybe we've got a little bit more lightness under this eye and through here. Yeah, there we go, just to blend in with that that um, that highlight. And then I gotta put some eyelashes on. Oh, he's looking cute. Maybe a little bit more shadow underneath here, just to get that eye to really pop out and make sure the viewer can see that eye really well. So sometimes you can just, you know, dictate what the viewer's focal point is by getting that particular section to pop out. So I wanted this eye to pop out a little bit more, so I just added a little bit more shadow underneath it. And you can and that's going to get it to um to come out a little bit further. But I'm not done yet. I still need a little bit more highlight in through here. And again, just tweaking it and stepping away from it and 
doing all you can to make it as cute as possible because this is a cute, cute animal. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add my eyelashes now. So my eyelashes are going to be, I'm using watered down black paint with my small brush and I'm going to have eyelashes on both sides. So I'm going to go for this right side first and it's going to be at the top of the eye and I'm just kind of flicking it out just a couple of times. I don't want to go overboard. Just, just a couple of little eyelashes will do to give it that sweet little look to it. And then I wanted to have a few on this side, which will take up this little corner a bit. And if you have a lot of black on this left-hand side and you can't see your eyelashes enough, you can always add a tiny bit of white to your brush and do a little bit of a highlight on a couple of those eyelashes and that will help them um, pop out. The right-hand side, you probably wouldn't have to do that too. And then of course, you can keep tweaking this as much as you need to, um, but we're gonna be, I'm gonna be using my medium brush for the next step, so once You've got your cute little eye all nice and, and painted on here and you have all your facial features as prominent as you want them to be. You can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to um, one of the funnest steps that I like to do, which is making wild grass. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm going to do this, I want to have some dark pieces of grass and I want them to go all the way to light pieces of grass. So I'm going to use a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to start with my dark color and work my way to the light colors. But when I get to my light colors, I don't necessarily need to go to white. I'll probably be using yellow and white together to make a light yellow, but I'll, I'll talk about that as I get to the lighter colors. But starting with black, and if your paint is really thick, you can add a touch of water, especially to your black paint, just to make it more of like an ink consistency so you can get some fluid pieces of um, grass to, um, to happen. I'm doing my darker grass down at the bottom. The blacks and the browns are definitely more towards the bottom and then towards the top they'll be lighter. So I have black on my brush and I'm not holding my brush tight. I hold it in a loose fashion and I let the, um, the brush kind of do the work. I don't really dictate what direction it's going in. I like my grass to have some a bit of a curve to it. So I've got some, some black um, pieces in through there. Now I'm not going to wash my brush and I'm just going to pick up some brown and I'm going to start to do some brown pieces. And every time I go for a lighter color, I'm going to move up higher and higher. So right now I might put a couple of um, brown pieces behind my beautiful little deer here. And I'm definitely putting some in front and how ever tall you want this grass to be, feel free to make it as tall as you want. I'm going into green right now and my green up on the right hand side is going to travel all the way up almost to the top of my canvas. I'm reloading my brush often and I am making these pieces of grass coming from every which direction. Sometimes I press harder so I have a a wider piece of grass. Sometimes I'm just using the little tip of my brush. So feel free to make them as um, wide or as thin as you want. As they go off in the distance, maybe they would be more out of focus. So maybe you don't have as much paint on your brush and you just kind of um, almost rub it in a little bit. Like I hardly have paint on my brush right now. So I'm really just um, utilizing those remnants to get pieces that are far off in the distance and again you can have them going everywhere so now I'm going into yellow but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little bit lighter of a green with that yellow and maybe some white so you can play with your different shades of green and yellow and white you can use them all together you can use them separately you can use them on your brush at the same time you don't have to pre mix colors but if you want to have a lot of um, tonal value throughout your painting that's a great way to do it which is just to take that 
original color and make it lighter and brighter or have a different um, hue to it. That will definitely allow you to get an assortment of those colors in there and make it look really nice and natural and give you a lot of depth and a lot of dimension. And so I've got this kind of a muted green that I'm working with right now. And I think in a second, yeah, hmm, I'm digging this. I'm going for a lighter, more yellow color for the next one. So I'm just going to take that green that I just had and add some yellow and some white. And again, you can do this directly on on your canvas if you want to but I'm just progressively getting lighter ah oh, yeah see there we go and I'm gonna put more brighter pieces up at the top I'm gonna try and refrain from putting too many bright pieces down at the bottom I definitely want some but I don't need I don't need as many down at the bottom as I have up at the top and in a sec, oh yeah, I just added a little more yellow. Um, in a second, I'm going to start utilizing more white. I'm going to make it really nice and bright so I have some real nice bright sunshine pieces. So I'm going for a lot of white and a touch of yellow. And these are going to be really bright pieces that are going to just kind of stand out. And again, you can have yours as bright as you want or as subtle as you want. Yeah, there we go. These are making me happy. And then we are gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got all your beautiful wild pieces of grass, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. And okay, <laughs> I'll stop making grass in a second here, but I'm very excited about my grass. So I'm just gonna kind of keep making as many pieces as I want to. And then when you are done making as many pieces of grass as you would like to, um, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our daisies. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using that tan color that we used everywhere on our, um, on our cute little deer plus white. So how I'm gonna do this, I want the first layer of my daisies to be a little bit darker than white so that way I can add a white highlight and make them have dimension. So, oh, and I'm gonna use a little brown on this step too. So I've got my, my tan color in through here and you might like it the way that it is but I'm gonna add a touch of white to mine just to make it a little bit lighter than that because I know it'll turn out a little bit darker and I need enough and I don't have enough of the original color, so I'm just making myself a little bit more. And I do want to forewarn you that before you attempt um, to put the petals on these daisies that, you, that your grass is dry, it will make your life a whole lot easier if you have dry grass underneath these um, daisies that we're going to put on. And I think that's pretty good for me. It doesn't have to be any specific color, just a light tan will do you. And I'm using my medium brush. I'm going to do these daisies in all different sizes, um, but I do have a focal one, which is going to be the one that my deer is investigating, as well as the butterfly that's coming in for a landing or sitting on it, whatever happens. Um, so this one is going to be really large. It's going to almost touch my deer's nose, and it's going to be about halfway um, from here to the end of my canvas. So I'm going to start maybe... Let's see, let's put this petal on first. So for me, daisies, these type of daisies, these are just gonna be a traditional white daisy with a yellow middle. They have a ton of little petals, they're long, and they all just kind of come out and turn, um, kind of flop over a little bit. And I'm not gonna see all of these daisies head on. I'm gonna have some of them leaning over, we're gonna see them from the side. So. As long as you, in, when you're building them, have in your head where the center is, all of your petals can come out from there. So for me, if I'm gonna have my center like right about here, that's where I can have all of my petals coming out. And they can be longer or shorter if I want this one to um, see, if we're to, that we're seeing the side of it, I can make the petals longer on the sides and more narrow at the top and the bottom and that's going to make it look like we are seeing it from the side and then I'm having all of my petals 
converge into that center area. And I'm going to continue this same process. I'm going to have several large ones and then I'm just going to progressively get into some smaller ones that'll look like they're hidden in the grass or off in the distance. So I'm going to have another big one coming up over here on the right hand side. I'm using a lot of paint on my brush right now. So this way I can have a good coverage on these um, on this first layer. It doesn't have to cover it 100%, but um, that first layer will definitely help you through your process if you have nice coverage to it. And again, this one we're seeing from, uh, from the side, so I've made my petals a little bit shorter on one side versus the other. I'm gonna have another pretty big one in through here and this one we're gonna see almost dead on oh yay there goes my doggies again <laughs> i don't i don't think i've gotten through a video in like three months where they haven't started to to bark throughout the process um let's see i'm gonna have another pretty big one in through here this one i maybe is gonna hide off of my canvas a bit and just have variety you know have some leaning over have some of them where we're almost seeing the center have them in different sizes coming in different you know angles this one i guess i'm going to have over off the side of the canvas maybe i'll have a little bit of a smaller one in through here and of course when you're around your um your deer or on top of your deer if you have any trouble spots that that weren't you know weren't cooperating while you were painting you can certainly put a beautiful daisy right in front of them <laughs> i think i'm gonna put a little one maybe in here as well and then let's see do i want any other bigger ones maybe i'll have a, a nice size one over here you can see right now i am progressively getting smaller and smaller i've i've tackled the biggest of the big ones that i want i think i'll have one coming off the canvas over here and then let's see maybe a little one or a semi little one in through here i'm going to get a whole lot smaller in a second just want to right now what i'm doing is just kind of making the ones that i know that i'm going to have um a little bit of detail to maybe i'll have a little one back here that i'm going to put a little detail to and then now i'm going to just do um chaotic little marks so if if you want one to kind of look like it's behind another one you can put a couple of petals coming out like that if you want to just see the side of one you can put petals like that i'm going to start making them really smaller so really i'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit maybe i've got one coming out the bottom of my canvas here as I go into the grassy land, I am just adding little marks here and there. I want to give the illusion that, there, that there's little daisies throughout the entire canvas or throughout the entire meadow of sorts. So I'm going to put some over behind my beautiful deer over in through here. So really I'm just kind of polka dotting it. I'm gonna, now that I've got them all in place, I'm without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of brown and this is going to give me my little shadow area in the center. I like doing this when the, with wet paint because they, the colors will talk to each other well. So with that bit of brown paint on my, on my dirty brush that is is a little wet itself i can put that brown in where i want the center of the flower to be and i'm just pulling out a little bit we're going to put the bright part of the flower in a minute but this is just getting that shadowy area to appear and you probably aren't going to have to do it on many just some of those main ones that almost appear to be more in focus than the other ones and again this is just adding a bit more dimension into them it doesn't have to blend in with those petals a hundred percent but if you can get it to blend in a little bit that's great and then we're going to switch brushes to our small brush so once you've got the beginning of your beautiful daisies on here you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first coat of our butterfly. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are orange, yellow, and white. And I'm just gonna pre-mix myself a 
a light orange kind of color. Uh, for me, the orange that I'm using, if I just add white to it, it's gonna turn a little pinky on me. So I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of yellow. So I'm mixing orange, yellow, and white to get myself this lighter version of orange that's going to have some good opacity to it so it's not so see-through. It's going to be my base coat for my for my butterfly. So I'm going somewhere in this vicinity and we're going to be looking at this butterfly from an angle and if after this step your paint is still a little see-through don't worry about it because we're going to have lots of details on that butterfly. I'm going to have this butterfly kind of hovering in through here and if I end up getting it too close I'll make him look like he's landing on it but right now I'm just going for the hovering look of sorts so I'm going to start maybe about an inch away from this petal in through about here and I'm going to give myself a soft diagonal line that's going to be about three inches long you could certainly make yours longer or shorter than mine that's totally up to you and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, from this point, I'm gonna give myself a soft diagonal line in this direction that's gonna come a little bit shy of where this is. So if you come straight down like this and just over to the left a little bit, that'll put you about in the same vicinity that I'm doing it, somewhere in there. And then I'm going to make myself a, um, a the edge. There's gonna be two wings that we see on this side. So I'm gonna just, for my own brain purposes, do this one first so I just have the right place to put the other one. And then I'm just gonna take this edge here and just ripple it down to about there. And then I'm just gonna color this in with my base coat. I did that um, bottom wing first just so I knew where I wanted that top wing to go and if you don't feel that you put them in a in a proper place you could certainly if you needed to you could extend the top one a little bit um, but we see butterflies at all different angles so it doesn't have to be exactly like mine maybe we're seeing yours at a little bit different of an angle so it works anyway any which way so then I'm going to put the other um, side of the the wing on so this is going to be um, about the same height maybe a little bit lower and it's going to be maybe about two inches away from the edge of that one so a little bit to the left of here you can um, is where the top is going to go and then I'll just give it a little bit of a arcing line in through there and then I'm going to round this top a little bit more than I have that one and it's going to end up about at the same playing field as this wing right in through here. And you can ripple the edge a little bit as you go down if you want to, something like that, and then just color it in. And then we are gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your beautiful butterfly on here, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am finishing my daisies. I am using my medium brush. I'm gonna use white, yellow, brown if I need to, and that creamy color if I need to. So, well, definitely the creamy color because I'll use that with the, with the white. But what I'm gonna initially do is I am going to be putting the center area into the flowers. So I'm really just gonna put yellow and white on my brush and a good amount of it. So yellow and white are going on my brush. And I know that the these centers are kind of in a circular fashion. So I'm just kind of maneuvering my, my brush into a little area within the center. It doesn't have to be um, necessarily a circle, but it could be like a little bit of an oval type shape. And I'm using a lot of paint so that way it is nice and um, thick looking and you can't see the uh, see through it. So just giving myself all of these little dots within the middle. So yellow and white is how I'm starting this. And you might not see all of them. So if you're going over on these little tiny ones in the grass and stuff, you might not even detect 
the centers of them. I think I got I think I got them all that all the ones that I wanted to. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up a little bit of brown paint and I'm going to make sure that I have a little bit of a shadow on the side of that center. Just on the ones that are really, you know, evident I'm just putting a little bit of brown over on that right hand side just so I have a good um, dimensional element to them. And it's not necessary to do this, but if you want to add that little punch of, um, of three dimensional look to it, that certainly can help you to, do, to achieve that. And then once I do that, I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna add the highlights onto the petals. So this is gonna be predominantly white, but if you feel that as you're doing this that you want it to blend in more with the, um, the actual tan color itself, you can certainly pick that up. And if you cover up too much of your brown for those shadow areas, you can certainly pick a little bit of that up as well. So for me, the highlight is gonna be predominantly on the top side of the petal. I don't want to color the whole thing white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of get my brush roll in here with these um, kind of curved lines that are emulating the, the curve of that particular petal. And then if I want it to blend in a little bit more, I can pick up white with that original tan color itself and that's going to get it to blend in as much as I want or if I have a trouble spot that is um, needing coverage on it th that second layer of the tan color could certainly assist you with that but you can see I'm not painting the whole thing and uh, the whole petal in white I want to make sure that I have some of those some of those darker areas in there and then I'm just going to kind of repeat this on the majority of my um, my flowers, at least the ones that are in focus, these larger ones, I definitely want to have this highlight represented on those. And then my smaller ones, I'll do I'll do the highlight on them, but I might not be so bold with um, with the color choices. And then I'm just going to go ahead and and get these little ones in through here and as I go into the smaller ones I tend to fly a little bit a little bit more and sometimes all you need is just like one little stroke of the white and that will get that that vibrancy on there that that will speak to the dimensional element of it and I'm just kind of cruising along here now and again as I'm getting to these smaller ones really I'm just kind of adding um, that white highlight, I don't have much paint on my brush at times, which will just allow me to add a bit of um, that, that brightness to it. I got these couple over here that I'm doing. So sometimes I tend to just add that highlight also, as you see what I'm doing right now, because I have a lot of paint on my brush. And then I can go back, if my paint remains wet, I can go back with that tan, um, color and just get it to blend in. So sometimes for me it's a little bit of a building process it, or you know especially on these larger ones they might take me a little bit longer but if you've got your rhythm sometimes you can just kind of cruise along and get that highlight part on there and then just come back with the the tan color. You might want to do layers on it sometimes um, adding more layers depending on how thick your paint is will work and then when I get to those smaller ones that are off in the distance I'm not concerned about them being in focus so I might just add a couple of little white dots to them and again that's just going to provide the illusion that they're the same type of flowers that are the ones that are in focus because they are carrying the same color off into the distance. So that's an easy way to get those uh, the, those dimensional elements to appear is just carry those same colors off into the distance and the viewer will read it as the same thing just farther away. So they don't necessarily have to be in focus. They just, you know, if you just carry those same colors even if it's in a muted fashion, that's going to tell the viewer it is in fact the same thing, but it's off in the distance. 
And then we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful daisies all nice and developed, you can um, put your medium brush away in your water cup. You can take out your, or wherever you'd like to, you can take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our butterfly. So I'm gonna use my small brush and the colors that I'm using are black, white, yellow, and orange. Um, and when doing this, we're gonna use our small brush, um, but there's a lot of little tiny detail lines. So we're, we're emulating a butterfly that is very native to where I come from, which is a monarch butterfly. And they have this, these distinct, very bright orange yellow color to them, but then they have this sharp black and white decorative element to them as well. So we're gonna be doing these really tiny lines. And when using a small brush like this, it may not always be nice and pointy for you. So what I'm gonna recommend you do, we're gonna be doing our black stuff first, or our black details first, is taking a little bit of water and thinning out your black paint a little bit just to make it more of like an ink consistency. And then when, when you reload your brush, if you take your brush and push it on the side of your palette and spin it, it will repoint your brush every time and that'll give you a nice skinny line. Even if your paint becomes a little bit translucent um, and is see-through a bit, you can always add another layer to it, but having it nice and thin will, get, will give you a better shot of having a nice skinny line. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put my body on the butterfly. So my body is gonna go somewhere right in, in the intersecting point of where those wings are intersecting, and it's gonna be just a little bit of, a, of an oval type shape something like this. I'm gonna put that on there and then there's a little a little tiny head that we can put in through here like that and then I am going to before I put the legs and the antennas and stuff I'm gonna um, separate my wings and kind of put an outline around my wings so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna just do a nice slender outline along the edge of this and I'm going to bring it right into the body. So I'm going to bring this right in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to outline the exterior edges. So I'm going to go ahead and outline this one with a slender black line. Well, maybe I should bump out my head a little bit more so we can see it. There we go. And then along the exterior line, or the exterior edge of these is where there's gonna be some decorative elements. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate this wing from the top one. So I'm gonna take my black paint and I'm gonna bring this over into this direction. So now we've got two separate wings in through there. And then along the edge, I'm going to push my brush and be a little bit wider of a line and I'm going to ripple it down this exterior edge like this. So this is going to start the decorative area. There's some polka dots that are going to happen in a little bit and I'm just bringing this right to the corner in through here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the top edge up and through here. So I'm just taking my brush and wiggling it right down into that area and then I'll do the same thing over on this edge. So just taking my brush and wiggling it a little bit. There's that song. It's amazing how many times I say the same thing. I never noticed it until I started doing these videos that I say the same, the same thing a whole lot. <laughs> so and once I've got those edges done, I'm going to start to um, make the interior markings. So I've got on this side, I'm gonna have one, like a loop in through here. And when I do these interior markings, I, I'm not pushing my brush very hard. I'm gonna have another um, sign of a loop on the edge of, of this one in through here. And then I'll have another loop, so to speak, 
over in through here and then once I have those loops in place then I I connect them to the edge of the um, of that particular wing so think of this as like little spider web um, markings and they're all coming kind of from that loop that interior I, I'm sure loop is not the, the right word for it but um, that's where they come from or that's where they're spawning off of and even up in through here I can just get these to make their way into that center area something like this and then I have one last little one up here and then while these black marks are drying we're going to go ahead and do our antennas and our legs so these cute butterflies have a little spiral um, antenna thing that comes off of their face. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's a it's in like a little spiral. So <laughs> I'm going to come off the face and I'm going to make myself a little spiral type antenna in through there. And then there's two antennas coming off of the head. So sorry if my hand gets in the way. I've got to give myself just the right amount of pressure to get these these little antennas. To, to happen. That's one and then I have another one that comes over here and if you make your lines a little bit wider um, a trick to making them look not as wide is you if you can't erase them or um, get them to look as slender as you want you can um, add a little white line on top of them and that will get them to look not as wide. Um, and then I've got I've got a couple of little legs. So this he's, he looks like he's kind of coming in for a landing as opposed to hitting the flowers. So we're just going to kind of get a couple of cute little legs like that. And then maybe he's got this one. I think I'm doing the correct anatomy. They have like a little uh, a little knee area and then a little curly put part as almost like a little foot, but. My lines are skinny enough. If I didn't get it perfect, that's all right. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And while my, um, my black edges are still drying, I'm going to accentuate my orange and yellow areas. So I am just putting a little bit of yellow on my brush and just kind of adding some pops of brighter yellow in through here. And you can do the same thing with your orange. I'm trying not to cover up all of that original orange but I am going to maybe touch my brush in that um, the the vibrant orange that we had without um, adding any of the yellow and this will just add those bits of yellow and um, orange that are very dominant in these in these wings and then once I've got that done I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm putting white paint on my brush. So there's polka dots all along the um, black edge here. So I am just going to be making my little polka dots. So I'm going to do maybe like two or three next to each other depending on how much space you have. You can put as many as you want or as few as you want. There is um, sometimes a little interior section maybe the black comes in through here a little bit if you want to bring that in through there and then i've got a little bit up along here and just try and make polka dots little tiny teeny tiny polka dots and my hand is almost in the wet paint of my daisy but i'm i'm working with it hopefully i won't smudge it too much so i'm just putting my little polka dots down there and if you want to you can also i have seen these where the polka dots kind of travel along the edge and through here and you could also put yellow or um, orange polka dots throughout there but i'm choosing to do the white ones just because they're the most um, prevalent and there's also white polka dots on the body too so I'm just taking that small brush and I'm adding more white polka dots along the body I'm gonna kind of avoid doing a distinct eye 
but if you want to figure out how to do an eye you're more than welcome to do so and then you can just kind of tweak this and make any little adjustments you want if you want brighter yellow just pull in some yellow and white on your brush and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you have your beautiful butterfly in here you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left corner. I'm using my small brush. I'm using black paint. You could certainly sign yours with whatever color you would like or wherever you would like. You could use a symbol or your first name or the date. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you've painted yourself a precious spring image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.